What's up everybody D-Man back welcome to a brand new video thank you guys so much for tuning in to another Monarch Legacy of Monsters season 2 predictions video in this video this is building upon the discussion we were having in the previous video in the previous video we were talking about all sorts of things surface world related we we're talking about Leisha in Axis Monday which actually isn't quite surface world related but present day related we're talking about Leisha's potential survival we're talking about potential mayhem on Skull Island what's up with the Titans the importance of of Axis Monday and all that good stuff. In this video, I want to go to the other end of the spectrum. In this video, I want to talk about our characters. What are our characters going to be doing and how could we link to the films? How can we develop Monarch even more? And I want to talk about how to get our guy, Dr. Sarazawa, involved. <laughs> One thing I was really disappointed with with Monarch Legacy of Monsters Season 1, and it's not the biggest deal ever, it happens literally at the very end of the last episode. I'm not the biggest fan of the time gap between 2015 to 2017 where we lose two years with our characters. I feel like there's a lot of missed opportunities and a lot of storylines I wanted to follow up on in the moment, such as whatever happened to Duvall, and I really wanted to see how Monarch dealt with coming out into the public for the first time, and also what is going on with Hiroshi's big gamma portals. Are they going to burst? Are kaiju going to emerge? We never really explored any of that because we jumped two years in the future and my fear would be that either A, we're going to pick up those storylines as if no time has been lost at all, or B, we're going to pick up and they're going to be like, oh, that's old news. We're on to new stuff now. I don't want either of those things. If no time has really passed for those storylines at all, it's going to feel really clunky. And if they just move on, it's going to be disappointing. My personal hope for Monarch Legacy of Monsters Season 2, and one thing I'm hoping they do is that they do an episode that fills out the gap between those episodes. It's kind of hard to say exactly how much time passes in the final episode as we see over the course of the last two episodes while our main characters are in Axis Mundi. We watch Kentaro heal from his wounds pretty freaking quickly. We don't really know how much time passed in that episode but what I would love to do is return to 2015 and fill out the gap from 2015 to 2017. I think at some point not really the first episode but at some point we will flash back to Kentaro, Tim, Hiroshi and see how they got involved with Apex and what exactly the deal they made with Apex was and how that relationship between Monarch and Apex is building as well. We'll have to learn how Apex was able to intercept the characters at the end of the 10th episode in the first place, like how did they know to catch them on Skull Island, we don't really know, but I think that we will fill out the gap from 2015 to 2017 and things that I think we could see in that time gap is Apex's relationship to Monarch, Monarch's relationship to the public, Monarch's relationship to our characters, and our characters' relationship to Monarch. Those would be great things to see. As for Monarch, Monarch, the state Monarch is in, I think is going to be a really interesting one to pick up with. I would love to see more of the Monarch we are aware of from the films. Now that we're getting into the nearly King of the Monsters era, we better be hearing about Castle Bravo, the Argo Jet, the characters from Godzilla King of the Monsters. Those characters, they don't necessarily have to all pop up, but some of them making a cameo here and there, some characters like Sarazawa having a important scene or two in the show. Those would be great moments that would really connect this to the actual films, because as it stands, Monarch Legacy of monsters really only tether to the films themselves is the monsters, which is the weird part. Normally you'd expect the characters to be the thing to link, but really we return to the 2014 bridge sequence, we return to Kong Skull Island, we do see a returning character there, that was a fantastic cameo. We also see like the mother long legs, Godzilla as he enters his 2019 design, and then finally Kong. The characters all felt so far removed, Monarch felt like a brand new organization, basically one that we had never seen before. It was weird. And I'd like to see more of the characters and more of the Monarch we're aware of from the film. What I would really love to see is the development of things like Castle Bravo, the way that they discover titans such as Ghidorah in the ice, things like building the Orca. It's so rich with potential. I would love to see those types of moments, and I would really like to see like maybe the way that Apex has shaped Monarch. Apex could be the one developing the Argo Jet and supplying them with all of the Ospreys. Apex could really elevate Monarch to the next level under the condition that Monarch continues to feed them data about the titans. There's so much to do with that, and there's a lot of good drama 
Zama in that as well. If Serizawa isn't into what Apex is doing, but he has to go along with it because of the deal, and his son is his point of contact who is working for Apex against him, that's good dramatic stuff right there. I also want to see the public backlash to Monarch and their rise in power overall. I mean, Monarch clearly goes from being a pretty well-funded organization in 2015 to being the massive scale futuristic organization they are in King of the Monsters, and I'd like to see that development actually happen. For a show called Monarch, I actually felt like the Monarch show dealt more with the fact that some of this one branch of Monarch isn't really the greatest and not really about the organization as a whole. Also, that scene where Monarch goes public, it felt like some of the public's reactions to Monarch going public wasn't totally hype, so I want to follow up on that. We know that it eventually leads to the King of the Monsters protests in the Senate hearings, but I want to see that actually happen. I also want Dr. Sarazawa to have a presence in Season 2. It was weirdly lacking in Season 1, and bringing him back could be a fantastic way to get more viewers onto the show who maybe weren't watching in the first place. It also would be a good way to get viewers who left the show at a certain point back on board to continue watching. It would connect it to the films, and it would capitalize on the massive missed potential of the films themselves. He doesn't need to be there a lot. Like I said, maybe one or two really important, impactful scenes in the season would be a great way to develop that character. Obviously, I want Verdugo to return. I think she's great. I'd like to see her and some of the other friendly monarch faces show back up. That'd be great. I would really enjoy that. We also need to find out what happened to Duval, and I don't really know what's going to go on. It seems like maybe she's going to try and continue Shaw's mission. I don't really know if that's what she wants, but that's a very possible way to take that character. Maybe she's trying to close more portals and they've got to stop her. I just want to know that she's been doing something for the last couple years. As far as the main cast goes, I think that there's going to be a lot of shifting dynamics in this new season, as I think Keiko, for instance, will really hate what Monarch has become and will be more fearful of Apex and not want them to be working with Apex in the first place. Meanwhile, I think Hiroshi might want to work with Apex, as Apex is the only one wanting to develop Hollow Earth technologies, and that would be something he wants to be in on, although they don't like the Titans, and he kind of has that whole, the enemy doesn't exist until you go looking for one mentality, it would still be an interesting way to see, this is the ends to the means that he needs to prove Hollow Earth, and this is the only way he can do so. As far as Kate and Kentaro, I think they are going to become really good buddies in this new season, and I think we will find out that either Kentaro or Hiroshi has kept Caroline in the loop generally, I think she's going to be pretty uninformed, but generally in the loop about Kate so that she doesn't just believe Kate is dead for two years. I think she's going to be aware that there's a potential Kate still out there and that it's got something to do with Monarch, but she won't really know what. I really hope anyways. Kentaro does seem like he would be considerate enough to do that. I think Kentaro and Tim will have become really good friends since we last saw them, and I think that they will have kept May's family in on the loop for sure. I don't really know how Tim and Hiroshi are going to get along, but I can see that being a little bit more of a rocky relationship. As far as May and Kate, I think Kate May is going to become a couple or May Kate. I don't know what the ship name is, but I think they're finally going to become a couple. And really what I'm more interested in is that I think those two characters are going to want to rejoin Monarch and will be at odds with the Apex organization. I could see Kate wanting to join Monarch after season one, and I could see that leading to a really interesting dynamic between Kate and Keiko, where the two of them will be a power duo. They'll want to fix Monarch, but they won't really know how. Keiko obviously would be like the senior position at Monarch, but also she's been gone for so long that she really can't be. So that'd be a super interesting thing to see her dynamic with the organization following this. Also, how does their reappearance either help to prove or help to continue to suppress rumors about Hollow Earth? How is Monarch going to deny Hollow Earth and Axis Mundi after what happened in this season? And then as far as Tim, I think he's going to be super conflicted about working for the bad guys, but he's been put in a position where he really has no choice, and I think he's just going to be stuck in this really rough spot, and I'll have to make some sort of amends with Monarch or Verdugo or maybe even Duval gets him out of that. I can see that being the way we go in the future, although Duval, I think for sure, would want to join Apex. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you have any questions or theories lingering after Monarch Legacy of Monsters Season 1, comment those down below. I would love to hear your thoughts, and I'd love to keep these conversations going. So please, any thoughts, any theories, comment those down below. And I'm going to give a huge thank you to my patrons over on Patreon. It is through the support of the patrons on Patreon that I'm able to continue doing videos like this for you guys. By supporting the Patreon, you can get early access to content, access to the Discord community, and more. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time for the next one. The next time, I think we're going to talk about Skull Island a lot. I think that'll be the theme of the next Monarch Legacy of Monsters video. So thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man out.